Good day everyone! I am Mary Grace of Helbolingo and for today, we will be discussing a new topic entitled Instructional Materials in Education. So without further ado, let's begin! Instructional Materials in Education These are any collection of materials including animate and inanimate objects and human and non-human resources that a teacher may use in teaching and learning situations to help achieve desired learning objectives. So what are instructional materials in education? This is also known as teaching or learning materials. Instructional materials are those materials used by a teacher to simplify their teaching. They include both visual and audiovisual aids and could either be concrete or non-concrete. These instructional materials bring life to learning by stimulating students to learn. So what are the contents that we have to learn as we go along with our discussion? So we are given here the four main contents of our discussion. And first is the guide to the selection of instructional materials. Second, introduction to the various roles of instructional materials in different teaching or situations. Third, different types of instructional materials that are available today. And lastly, selecting suitable materials to specific purposes. Here we are given the guidance in the selection of instructional materials under instructors and instructional media should be. So under instructors, the instructors must be first thoroughly familiar with the content of all media used in instruction and the instructors must select only instructional media that are consistent with student capabilities and learning styles. Hence, we are given as well the instructional media should be. So the instructional media should be first chosen objectively rather on the basis of the teacher's personal preference or bias. Second, instructional media should be chosen on the basis of their contributions to the learning outcomes. Third, instructional media should produce locally by instructor usually make significant contributions to learning. Fourth, follow learning activities. And lastly, it must be appropriate to the teaching formats being used. We are also given the guidelines in selection of instructional materials. We have here the purpose, objectives, flexibility, diversity, development, content, and guide learners. We also have the three basic classes of instruction methods and its roles in different teaching or learning systems. We have the individualized instruction, the group learning, and the mass instruction. So let's first tackle about individualized instruction. Individualized instruction is a method of instruction in which there is one-to-one -one teaching and self-paced learning based on an outline of progressive goals leading to the course or curriculum objectives. Courses appropriate for individualized instruction are usually those that require skill building. The following are the examples under individualized instruction and the role of the teacher. For the examples, we have here the following. Directed study, open learning, distance learning, program learning, mediated self-instruction, computer-based learning. And for the role of the teacher, they can be producer or the manager of resources. At the same time, they can be tutor and the guide. Next is we have the group learning. The group learning is an educational approach that focuses on individuals learning in small groups and is distinguished from learning climate and organizational learning. It is also described as a team-based approach to learning where students work together towards shared learning objectives. The following are the examples under group learning. So we have the tutorials, seminars, group exercises and projects, games and simulations, and the self-help group. For the role of the teacher, they can be organizer and facilitator. Lastly is we have the mass instruction. This is the opposite of individualized instruction because this is a method in which content, materials, and pace of learning are the same for all students in a classroom or course. Lastly is we have here the mass instruction. Mass instruction 
is the opposite of individualized instruction because this is a method in which content, materials, and pace of learning are the same for all students in a classroom or course. So we have here the examples under mass instruction. These are conventional lectures and expository lessons, television and radio broadcasts, and films. As for the role of the teacher, they can be traditional expository role and the controller of instruction process. Moving on, we have here the types of instructional materials. We have here the four types of instructional materials. These are printed and duplicated materials, non-projected display materials, still projected display materials, technological and instructional media. First is we have, we're going to tackle the printed and duplicated materials. These comprise all textual and handout materials to be used by students or trainees, which can begin off in large numbers by printing machines, photocopiers, and duplicators. Next, non-projected display materials. These are aids which are used without projection. They can tra translate abstract ideas into a more realistic format. And at the same time, they allow instruction to move from verbal representation to a concrete level. The best example here are the bulletin boards and the blackboards. Still projected display materials. This refers to all visual display materials which incorporate movement. These require an optical projector and these include some of the useful, useful visual aids that are available to teachers. Usually when we are using projector in our classroom is the best example of steel projected display materials. And lastly, we have here the technological and instructional media. These are the systems, devices, and apparatus that present and adapt information during the teaching process. These technological instructional media have three functions. We have informational, testing, and instruction, instructional. We also have the different types of instructional materials that are available today. Under materials and technology, we have first, the technology offers the possibility of alternative materials and classroom interaction, and the after audio and video cassettes, the next major technological change was the use of computers and the internet. The internet is bringing further changes as courses now can be downloaded from all over the world. And for the last one is we have the topic online tools for teaching learning. And these are the following. The clickers, the kahoot, and puzzle, plastic, psychology, padlet, Weaselet and the Muslim Kids TV. So let's try to look at it individually. First is the Kahoot. It is a free student response tool for administering quizzes, facilitating discussions, or collecting survey data. It is a game-based classroom response system played by the whole class in real time. Clickers. This is an assessment tool which allows teachers to collect on the spot formative assessment data through online games and lessons. Third, we have Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a free assessment center tool that allows teachers and students to create interactive online videos by embedding either open-ended or multiple choice questions, audio notes, audio tracks, or comments on a video. Classic. It is a free digital formative assessment tool that allows teachers to create lessons and assignments that students work through on their devices at their own space. Padlet. A Padlet is a virtual bulletin board in which collab collaborators can simultaneously create an organized post of any content type, whether it be text, documents, images, videos, links, etc. Scology. Scology is an online learning management system that allows educators to organize curriculum, create lesson plans, and provide student assessment. Quizlet. A Quizlet takes information and converts it into flash flashcards, quizzes, and games so that users can study the same information in a variety of forms. Canva. A Canva can be used to create a variety of images 
including event flyers, resumes, cards, certificates, and infographics. YouTube A YouTube is a free tool that allows you to create, collect, and organize videos around specific topics or interests. And lastly, the Muslim Kids TV. This is the first Islamic internet TV for children to spend time learning about Islam. They enjoy interactive games, download and print educational resources. In conclusion, instructional materials make learning more interesting, practical, realistic, and appealing. They also enable both the teachers and students to participate actively and effectively in lesson sessions. They give room for acquisition of skills and knowledge and development of self-confidence and self-actualization. Instructional materials are essential tools in learning every subject in the school curriculum. They allow the students to interact with words, symbols, and ideas in ways that develop their abilities in reading, listening, solving, viewing, thinking, speaking, writing, and using media and technology. Those are all for my discussion and thank you so much for listening and hope that you understand something about my discussion. Have a blessed day everyone and stay safe.